The Valhalla DLC for God of War Ragnarok significantly changes how progression works with many new buffs and upgrades for you to unlock. Some of these are temporary, while others will last you the whole DLC, but I have many tips on what upgrades are the best and how to quickly unlock them. Now one of the things I wasn't really paying attention to in Valhalla were the pots scattered throughout the different areas. But you definitely should be as these can drop some extra fleeting echoes that you can of course spend on temporary upgrades for your current run. However, you will eventually be able to unlock two upgrades from the Tablet of Influence that you of course find in the shore area before you start a run. With these upgrades you can make mastery seals and spirit seals also appear in these pots. And those resources are needed for permanent upgrades so that makes the contents of these pots way more valuable. You don't get a lot from breaking a single pot but considering how many of them you're likely to come across it definitely adds up over time. And one added benefit is that the pots containing these mastery and spirit seals are highlighted in either purple or yellow. Pots are often found in clusters which means that thanks to the upgrade they're easier to spot in general. So totally get this one as soon as possible and there are more amazing upgrades that I will touch on a bit later in the video. Because first I think it's good to let you know how to quickly get a ton of mastery and spirit seals so you can easily unlock these upgrades. Two easy ways to make sure you get more of them is by selecting higher difficulties and by making sure you pick the highlighted shield and rage before entering Valhalla. But if you want even more upgrade materials then it's worth having a look at your labor and mastery challenges. Some of the masteries even reward you with new armor cosmetics so that's a nice added bonus along the way. Unfortunately those also take the longest to complete but it will definitely be worth it and there are actually some things you can do to make getting these rewards a bit easier. When it comes to the more long-term mastery challenges a ton of them are related to trying out different things like completing encounters with every type of shield or rage or unlocking every runic attack for a weapon at least once. So if you want to reap the rewards for those challenges as quickly as possible make sure sure you always pick something you haven't picked before. And if you for example forgot which runic attacks you've already unlocked, you can of course check your progress in the menu to make sure you pick one you haven't used before. But for some quicker and easier rewards, you should focus on your labors and specifically the ones tied to using specific attacks. You always have four of these weapon challenges active and they just require you to use a specific attack a number of times. Progress starts counting as soon as you start your run in Valhalla, meaning you can use the weaker enemies from the first room to easily grind out at least one of these challenges per run. That means you'll get at least 20 mastery seals and 60 spirit seals per run on top of anything you earn from making progress during that attempt. Don't forget to claim your rewards at the labor stone after your current run has ended which will also cycle in a new challenge so you can keep grinding. It's of course even better if you can complete the rest of the challenges over the course of your run but this first room offers you a risk-free and easy way to complete at least one challenge. One final tip that applies to both types of challenges if you want to grind these out it might be worth it to switch to a lower difficulty to make things easier as the difficulty bonus does not apply to the rewards you get from challenges. And we have way more tips for you so be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video so far and subscribe as well for more videos on God of War and the DLC. Okay now that you know how to get the resources let's cover all the upgrades you should be focusing on. Keep in mind that not all of these are unlocked at once so if I list an upgrade here that doesn't show for you yet just keep progressing through the DLC storyline and it should eventually appear. Right from the get-go however you are able to permanently increase all of Kratos' stats and considering how the first tiers of these upgrades are relatively cheap they're a very worthwhile investment. Obviously health and rage should take priority and I think that strength and defense also belong on the must upgrade list. Melee combat will still be your bread and butter in Valhalla so dealing more damage and taking less is better than lowering your cooldowns for example. Because while stats are certainly important there are even bigger upgrades you can buy for Kratos at the Tablet of Reflection. Survivability is of course the most important thing in this roguelike game mode and because of that the three extra upgrades under the health and rage category are all must-haves. Unlocking critical health regen means that if you end an encounter under a certain amount of health it will regenerate up to that amount before you enter the next one. It can be upgraded to increase your minimum health after an encounter from 10 to 30 percent and can be a real life saver after a difficult fight. But of course you'd rather avoid getting to low health and that is where health looter comes in. When purchased Every time you loot a legendary chest or a rift, so basically the rewards that spawn at the end of an encounter, you get a bit of health back. Again, the amount can be upgraded by leveling the perk up to a maximum of 10% health restored. So unless you take no damage at all, some extra health at the end of an encounter is always nice, which is why I highly recommend you grab this upgrade. And even if those two upgrades aren't enough to keep you alive, you can buy one extra ace up your sleeve by making sure you start each run with a resurrection stone. They were already nice in the base game, but of course the 
consequences of dying in Valhalla are more severe, which makes an extra life even more valuable. And unlike the main game, you can even buy a second resurrection stone to start each run with, effectively giving you three lives before you are kicked out of Valhalla. Unlocking that second stone does require some divine triumphs, a rare material in Valhalla you get from beating bosses, so might be a while before you can unlock it. Although after you've made some progress, you are also able to buy a divine triumph in the Greek section of Valhalla if you have a thousand fleeting echoes on you. Which sounds like a lot, but the rifts you need to complete in this section also grant a ton as a reward, so make sure you check if you have the echoes to spare before you move on. Those divine triumphs are also needed for some of the higher level health and rage upgrades, so they're sure to come in useful. So those are all the ways you can make Kratos stronger, but there is of course a second list of upgrades that apply to Valhalla itself, which you find at the Tablet of Influence. Especially the resource category has some great upgrades here, as it gives you access to the pot upgrades I mentioned earlier in the video. But even more impactful is the ability to grant you a set amount of fleeting echoes at the start of every run. As you probably expect by now, this amount can be upgraded from 100 to 300, but even the first level of this perk is really useful. Upgrading a runic attack once, for example, will cost you 125 echoes, meaning that with the starting echoes unlocked, you'll probably have enough for that at the first tablet of endeavor you reach. But I'd recommend you save up at least 220 echoes in the starting areas, and that is because when you reach the upper realms of Valhalla, so after beating your first proper boss, the first tablet of endeavor you come across will always offer you a damage upgrade for one of your weapons. So getting some echoes at the start of a run goes a long way in making sure you can grab this upgrade every time. You can also upgrade the amount of echoes you get from completing an encounter, meaning you can buy even more temporary upgrades during a run. And don't forget, you can buy a small health or rage boost with these echoes too if you need it. Just be aware that you don't buy the second tier of these boosts that become available in Greece, as these also cost you 100 spirit seals. While health is of course very important during a run, it's not worth it to spend resources for permanent upgrades on improvements for a single run in my opinion. And if you want even more spirit seals and mastery seals, you can also make sure that you get more of both after beating enemies marked as Valhalla's Chosen. You already get a small sum of these materials by default, but the upgradable seals Valhalla's Chosen perk lets you increase this amount. While the first upgrade list it increases your seals gained by a small amount, it actually doubles the number you'd normally get. And considering that the amount of Valhalla's Chosen you need to beat in Greece keeps getting higher, it means that you'll be grabbing a lot of mastery and spirit seals if you also upgrade the amount you get after each encounter. And finally, if you want to increase your choice of perks during a run, there are several upgrades under the offerings category that help with that. These can add more perks and items at the Tablet of Endeavor, or give every chest a small chance to contain three rewards to choose from instead of two. Now I like the random aspect of Valhalla, so I don't mind rolling with whatever I get, but if you want to give yourself more options to perfect your build in a run, these might be handy. The two upgrades I do recommend everyone picks up are the light and heavy runic attack upgrades, as these give you a chance for runic attacks to spawn at level 2, which both saves you the cost of upgrading it the first time and immediately gives you access to a more powerful variant of the move. If you have more tips for the Valhalla DLC, let us know in the comments, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe so you won't miss the next one, and watch our overview vid for the new content by clicking on the screen. I will see you in the next one, goodbye.